uh, the site of our grudge match in this uh, pseudo best of three. King Avocado taking the first match with a well-timed all-in. Uh, Eye of Darkness taking the second one with a kind of a more standard game, rolling over King Avocado with uh, Mutas. And now we're on to game three on Antigua Shipyard, so welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. I am Maristomatic, the caster, and spawning in the top, I guess the right base on this map. Uh, I would call this about 2 o'clock, maybe, yeah, 2 o'clock, maybe 2.30. So spawning in the 2 o'clock base as our yellow zerg, it's going to be Eye of Darkness. And spawning down in the bottom, the 5 o'clock base, as our purpley Protoss, it's King Avocado. Uh, so this map, the latter version of the map, gold base, uh, still here in the middle of the map. Uh, that was repeating the word map too many times. But regardless, um, the gold base still there. Not te uh, probably not utilized too much unless the Protoss can really secure a lead in this game. Uh, the gold base always risky to take on this map, uh, unless you are Terran can use that sort of to fortify a tank push. Uh, the scout already in here for King Avocado, so I probably knows that this is uh, close positions. He's not sure which close, but his overlord will be right there, so he should be pretty sure that his opponent's down in the bottom base. Now this can turn into some interesting games, especially since the Protoss has to expand toward the Zerg at the beginning of this game, uh, which is actually what you want to do, especially if they're going Mutalisks as the Mutalisks will have to fly over your army or take just a really circuitous route uh, toward the back door. So, usually against a Mutalisk style, you want to expand toward them, um, especially as Terran, I would say, but uh, Protoss is starting to figure that out too. It's easier to control Blink's Doctors uh, going forward rather than side to side. Uh, whereas the Zerg very happy with these spawns as well, because he'll be able to expand away from his opponent, and also they share this common choke point, uh, where he'll be able to even do some flanks down both ramps. So the the probe gets into scout. He is going to scout another speedling opening, just like he faced in the last game, and uh, this is probably going to tip him off that it's mostly the same build, and actually going to get that cybernetic score at the wall, which is something we haven't seen him do very much. Uh, the zealot will be there to wall off second gas already taken. We'll probably see more of the three-gate robo style, uh, again from King Avocado, as he has in the two previous matchups of these two. Uh, warp gate started, there's the second gateway, and then, as soon as he can, actually going to get a sentry. I, I like this choice a lot, especially since he scouted the speedlings. Stalker's not so good against speedlings unless they're behind the zealot, whereas the sentry will be able either to split them in half, or he can force field them off entirely, uh, depending on his reaction. I just stockpiling minerals. Uh, we'll see if he goes for speedling aggression, or uh, that's what I thought he would do. He's just going to go down, take a pretty early expansion, uh, try to get that economic lead. Um, maybe even doing sort of a fake, since the last time he did just this really hyper aggression with speedlings. Actually going for it again. Just as I say that, I was hoping for a little bit of mind game, but it seems we're mistaken. Uh, King of Avocado looks way more prepared for it this time. Uh, robotics facility going down, pylon about to finish, and then the stalker's going to, uh, two stalkers actually started, and going to be able just to hold off, you know, quite a few lings. It takes eight zerglings to knock down a zealot at the front door. Uh, if you have force fields, of course, it'll take way more. You can mineral walk through the whole position zealots as well, just passing on some knowledge. Uh, probe scouting the front. This may be a little bit dangerous. He might be thinking about expanding, but going to see all these speedlings come in. Nice force field from King Avocado. Now the stalker is going to be able just to shoot up a couple of them, trying to sneak past the zealot here. So King Avocado going to hold briefly. Needs another force field. He's got enough energy for it. And the Ling's just going to go home. But we see the lair already almost finished, probably going to pop out some Mutalisks. Uh, King Avocado again looking fairly prepared for it. A bunch of stalkers 
uh, coming in. That'll bring his total to four stalkers and a sentry for anti-air as well as the one zealot to finish the wall in. And then going again for that really quick uh, Colossus Den slash Robotics Bay, whatever you want to call it. More Lings being streamed in. I'm not sure I like this choice. Eye of Darkness really just needs to sit back and macro at this point. Uh, maybe hoping not to be caught unawares by the, the really early 3 gate robo timing. Uh, probe down here, going to put down a pylon and then probably an expansion uh, for King Avocado. Uh, might have lost track of his probe. There it comes. So yeah, the expansion goes down. And we'll be on even expansions here shortly. If we actually look at the units tab, we're completely even in workers. Um, I'm not quite sure why he's getting the overseer. Uh, he knows the style is robo. I'm not sure he scouted it. That might be why. Just to, uh, just in case of a DT rush. DTs tend to hit actually about 9.30 if my memory serves. <laughs> Here comes the changeling to meet up with the army. He might just be doing it for scouting immediately. Shot. Oh, quite a brutal death there for the changeling. And these zerglings at the watchtower, unless they're controlled, could be picked off. But uh, King Avocado just really poking around, looking uh, to make sure there's no lings, you know, who can do a run by or a counterattack. And he'll probably start stocking up on those colossus. And this is the game he wanted to play last game. Uh, but was unable to do so because of the mutilisk pressure. Um, King, er, of course, I have darkness. Going to change things up this game. Getting the infestation pit and the pathogen glands. Infestor's very good against Protoss. Uh, very good in general, but uh, specifically against Protoss, or at least they used to be. Uh, the neuroparasite range has really made them a little bit less effective against the general death ball style. If you can get. Uh, Colossus out. It sort of negates uh, the pressure of the uh, infestors because the neural parasite can't get them as much as it used to uh, with a range of 7 instead of 9. Overseer going around. Uh, that was creepy. His head just popped out of his body. But a little bit of per uh, period of macroing up. Uh, four infestors on the way for Eye of Darkness. Both players spending their money very well. Only a two supply lead for the Zerg player. Just kind of strange given the lack of harassment, really. Uh, Observer headed out to the Watchtower. Uh, or stopping short of the Watchtower. But leaving it in a good area to check the attack path. Uh, actually, the Changeling going to get in here and scout the army composition and actually gets shot again. Oof. Another brutal death for another Changeling. And uh, Thermal Lance just about done, but he has no Colossus to use it with. And I think pushing might be uh, a little bit risky here. Uh, trying to catch some of the links with a force field, uh, but perhaps a little bit errant. They're actually going to run by into the main, and there's nothing here to defend. Uh, a couple of zealots warped in back home smartly by King Avocado. Uh, now the minerals getting, a, actually both resources getting a little bit high. No production for either player. So a little bit micro-intense at this point. <laughs> Another probe finally started. A couple of drones and a couple of overlords. There's a pylon as well. These infestors going to be able to do a lot of damage. The uh, Immortal, though, uh, going to help tank the spine crawlers. Uh, Immortal's very good against uh, buildings and spine crawlers. Uh, here comes the flank from the other Zerglings. Not as well timed as he would have liked. Uh, very nice force field, keeping them off of his army, at least for the time being. Um, I'm not sure who's going to come out ahead at this point. Uh, the Protoss army just evaporating, a couple more force fields going down, and actually it does look like the Zergs gained a commanding advantage. Uh, 20... Er, uh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, a 14 supply lead now for our Zerg player. Uh, getting Burrow as well as some Roaches. And I like this, he'll be able to go for... Uh, some burrow roaches, as well as some uh, burrowed infester play, uh, which can really catch the protoss by surprise if he doesn't have um, observers in good positions. A couple more gateways going up at the front, and uh, uh, King Avocado now is just going to do the best he can. One Colossus coming out. I think he should have waited for it for the push. He put a lot of his tech money into Colossus, and they didn't have any uh, when he went to push the front. And 
And now the Zerglings streaming in the opening. They're going to be able to get a couple of free kills before anything able to respond. This Colossus starting the ramp, uh, not able to engage in the battle. It might have gone much differently had the Colossus been there. Units pulling back his the net. Needs to be careful with the Colossus. But neural Parasite not done, so uh, that's not the real danger here. Colossus doing a lot of damage, being micro away. Very smartly. Get, uh, these Infested Terrans are also a good idea. Uh, getting free kills for essentially energy. And King Avocado actually holds and regains the supply lead after that. Uh, so really nicely done. The Colossus, the real hero of the battle, 16 kills uh, for him. A couple of mentor stalkers. And he needs to move all of his army up to the, the front. Now that he's scouted uh, the Infestors. He knows Mutalisk shouldn't be forthcoming. Uh, tunneling Claws being researched for some roaches, and going to go for some heavy bur aggro. Which is a really interesting choice. Not a lot of Zergs do it very much. And the economic lead actually to the Protoss. Six more workers, uh, or six more probes than drones of his opponent, uh, which means that the army size just fairly in favor of the Zerg player, but this of course is Eye of Darkness's style. Not necessarily high economy, but uh, always aggro. <laughs> so 11 roaches on the way uh, to sort of complete his army. He's got a... looks like a septet of infestors. A little bit more than a brofester hit squad. And quite a few lings, all, all set to different hotkeys <laughs> very nicely uh, by King Avocado. Or by uh, Eye of Darkness, excuse me. And then this entirely gateway army, one Colossus. I would like to see a couple more come out. Uh, actually has a War Prism. And that could provide for some entertainment. So we'll see what he decides to drop. He's still got the Immortal Rally back there. So that might be his choice. Um, no DTs. Uh, making a High Templar. Or a Templar Archives right here. Uh, and those, of course, very good against... Uh, both Terran and Zerg. Uh, not as... Excuse me, as good against Protoss, but... The Shark Mode army moving out to the middle of the map uh, for our Zerg player, Eye of Darkness. Actually, you've retaken the supply lead uh, just by macroing. <laughs> so this army, not exactly mobile underground. Uh, doesn't even have the... Gil all reconstitution, the Zerg movement speed. Taking down the rocks the third. I, uh, hopefully King Avocado spots this with this pylon. Uh, it shows both these players uh, approximately Platinum League. Uh, I definitely Platinum League. King Avocado hasn't played a whole lot of ones recently. But that's about where I'd put him. Uh, Stalker's now going to move up here and shoot. Uh, the Roach is actually going to speed up this process. And the flank coming in, uh, or at least attempting to uh, from the Zerg army. Roach is moving in, but they're being not slaughtered, actually. There's no 